So the first step toward healing diastasis recti is discovering if you have it or not. Um, some good news might be that if your um, separation is less than one fingertip width, you are classified as not having DR, so congratulations. However, if it is one fingertip width or greater, then you are classified as having some diastasis recti, a separation of those muscles, and um, it's, uh, it's completely healable. Um, some people have an extremely wide separation, others have a much narrower one. After my second child, I had a three fingertip separation. It took me about six months of consistent work to bring the muscle walls back together again. And I think it's important at this point to say that um, DR is not just a separation of the muscles and what we're doing is not just strengthening the core muscles. Um, one of the things that you run into problems with in a, in a gym setting or in uh, a standard workout setting is that um, you'll, sometimes I've, I've heard people um, complain that their trainer or someone that they've been talking to has said to them, well, you just need to strengthen your core. Yes, you probably do, that's probably true, but that's not what is at issue for DR. The, the problem that we are trying to heal is not simply a separation of muscle, but the connective tissue, the fascia that connects muscle to muscle, has become separated. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring those um, pieces of connective tissue back together again. So it isn't just a question of strength and, oh, my, my core is weak and so I have to do a lot of sit-ups. In point of fact, please don't do any sit-ups. When we're healing DR, we don't do anything from the floor up. It's very dangerous, you can widen the separation. So lay off the crunches, no sit-ups, and no doing the Pilates 100, no doing a roll up from the floor up. You can do the roll back, but no roll up. So first things first, diagnosis. Lie on your back in what we call the shoulder bridge position with your feet flat on the floor, parallel to one another, your knees are up to the ceiling, and your legs can be open about hip socket width. So you're gonna put one hand behind your head and one hand right on top of you. Now you're gonna lift your head with your hand. Again, nothing from the floor up because it can open the spread a little bit wider. Use your hand. Lift your head up, roll yourself up so you're looking right at your belly. In a lot of different Pilates studios, you'll hear this whole area referred to as the powerhouse, and you'll hear me say it too. Um, I was originally trained at Power Pilates, and so that stuck in my head. So, as you roll up, look right at the powerhouse, and you're going to take your fingers and you're going to feel around. It's your body, you're allowed to touch it. So you can start at your belly button, and press two or more fingers directly down in the direction of the floor. And if you feel a separation of the muscles, you'll feel it immediately. Your fingers will just sink down into your belly. So I don't have a separation anymore, but I can feel where the muscles come together there. And as I walk up, I have a stronger abdominal wall in the upper part of my abdominal muscles than in the lower part. That's also really standard for women post childbirth. So here's my belly button. Then I can go down below my belly button and feel the same thing. And again, I'm pretty strong down here now, and there's no separation. However, if you do notice a separation, your finger slides down into your body, turn your hand just slightly and see how many fingertips go in there. Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? And this way, you're holding your hand so that it's sideways so you can tell how wide the separation is of the muscles from one another. So once you've done that, then you have your basis for, okay, how far do I need to go with, uh, with bringing my muscles back together again? But that's your basic diagnostic. And you can do this at your OBGYN, you can do this with your, um, with your midwife, and of course you can do it on your own in your own living room. So just make sure that your toddler is not gonna jump up and down on you. So bring your head back down onto the mat, Take a little break, and if you do have DR, you will already have noticed that, wow, that was exhausting just holding my head up just for that amount of time.
Uh, there's our diagnosis, and the next video we make will be a little exercise where we start bringing those muscles back together again. Thanks.